I want you to hit me as hard as you can. It should go without saying that Harrison Ford is a legendary actor. Sure, you could point towards his Academy Award nominated performance in the excellent film Witness, or talk about his portrayal as Jack Ryan in Patriot Games and Clear and Present Danger. Hell, you could even point towards his portrayal as the most badass president on film in Air Force One. Get off my plane. But of course, whenever you hear the name Harrison Ford, two culturally influential characters come to mind. Han Solo, and Indiana Jones. And did you know there was actually a story made about the early life of one of those characters? Um... Solo. Wait, what? I have no idea what that movie is. And even if I did, that was just a cruel prank played by some troll who hired some actors, made some costumes, wrote a horrible script, and hypnotized people into thinking it was an actual movie that played in theaters. But it wasn't! Because if it was, then that means that my childhood has been irreparably SOILED! Trust me guys, this sort of thing happens all the time. But no, I was referring to the TV show that featured the adventures of young Indiana Jones, where we got to see young Indy going on adventures, meeting interesting characters, and witnessing history being made in the world. Sounds like a great idea, right? What a great companion for some of the best movies ever made. But does this show hold up, and should it come back? Well, the answer may surprise you in this episode of Gone But Not Forgotten. In 1992, George Lucas came up with the idea of making a TV show based on Indiana Jones' life before the events of the movies. He pictured it as an educational show, which is a smart idea because you could have plenty of adventures with a great character like Indiana Jones, who's alive during these moments in history that shape the world. So each episode would feature some historical character or event, sometimes prominently placed in an episode like where 20-year-old Indy and a young Ernest Hemingway fight over a girl and other times more like a cameo, like when teenage Indy falls in love with a suffragette played by Elizabeth Hurley, and has dinner with Winston Churchill. By the way, has Elizabeth Hurley always been gorgeous? Didn't she go through anything like the rest of us normal folk have gone through? Like being bullied or having that horrible dream of someone seeing you naked in your underwear? Oh wait, no. That's my dream. But other times where Indiana met so many historical figures at one time, it was just silly. The best example of this was an episode where Baby Indy, played by former child actor Corey Carrier, met Picasso, Rockwell, and Degas. This is probably the worst episode of the series. It's so cheesy and filled to the brim with bad acting, dialogue, and ham-fisted lessons. Now there's another thing I want to talk about, the show's constant way of shoving historical facts or messages down the audience's throat. It was pretty prominent in the Baby Indy episodes, like when Baby Indy goes to Morocco and meets a young slave by the name of Omar, who is ordered by his master, Emily Keane, to be Indiana's playmate. Baby Indy then has a talk with his family about slavery. The emissary of the Sultan says that Omar is better off because if he wasn't a slave, he would starve. His tutor, Miss Helen Seymour, says that no one should give up their freedom for shelter. And Indiana's father, Henry Jones, says... Slavery was accepted through most ancient civilizations. Not having slaves is a relatively new idea. Whoa, whoa, who the hell do you think you are, pal? Sean Connery? I'm just kidding, Sean Connery's not a racist. He's a wife beater. Not at all. You think it's good to slap a woman? No, I don't think it's good. You I don't think, think it's bad? It must, I don't think it's that bad. I think that it depends entirely on the circumstances and if it merits it. Okay, kids, now it's time to play the game of Find the Episode's Message. Is it when Henry Jones encounters religious prejudice? No. Is it when Baby Indy teaches Omar the Slave how to play catch? No. Is it when Baby Indiana Jones decides to dress up like an Arab boy, sneaks into the market with Omar to look at a head on a pike from a man who was recently executed, gets kidnapped by slave traders, and is almost sold at a slave auction, where he finally realizes that slavery is bad? Yep, that's right, kids. You found the message! <laughs> 
That's not to say that all the episodes were like this. Most baby indie episodes are pretty blatant with the historical facts. However, you do get some insight into Indiana's history, like when we meet his very kind mother, who serves as a peacemaker between Indiana and his father. We find out that she eventually dies of scarlet fever, and also cheats on his father with Giacomo Puccini. Oh yeah, that was an episode. Indiana Jones' mom almost leaves his dad for one of the greatest Italian opera composers of all time. Because when you're gonna cheat, you may as well go big. But there are some inaccuracies from what we've learned about Indiana's history previously. For example, we are led to believe that he got his fear of snakes at 8 years old, when in fact we learned in The Last Crusade that he got it by running away from bad guys on a circus train. Or when 8 year old Indy goes on a day trip with his father in Greece, where Henry teaches Indy about philosophy and bonds with his son. <laughs> What you taught me was that I was less important to you than people who'd been dead for 500 years in another country. And I learned it so well that we've hardly spoken for 20 years. You left just when you were becoming interesting. One of these things is not like the other. It's really the teenage indie episodes that the show starts to pick up. Sean Patrick Flannery played Indiana Jones from the ages of 16 to 21 years old. We begin the teenage indie years when 16-year-old Indiana runs away from home and joins the Belgian army under an alias to fight in World War I. Now these episodes are brutal and really represent the horrors of war. This is also why a lot of parents were upset that the show was too violent. Which is completely idiotic because war is not something that can be solved in 45 minutes in which everyone is just wounded. I mean, did they even watch the movies? You know, for kids. The show also had some amazing cameos, like when we meet a time-traveling Agent Coulson as Indy goes on an adventure trying to steal one of Thomas Edison's projects. We also have Christopher Lee playing a slimy diplomat. One of the funnier cameos of the show, which was a total surprise to me. Um, <laughs> um, it is a fitted suitcase. Hmm? Airbrush, razor, air oil. Oh, I... I... I never use hair oil. It is not hair oil. It is invisible ink. <laughs> I am C-3PO Human Cyborg Relations. My facilities are at you. But the best guest star was in an episode set in Africa during World War I, where Indiana Jones meets... And that is Captain Schiller, head of German intelligence. Oh, I'm sorry, but you have him confused with someone else. His name is... The name's Bond. James Bond. That's right, Indiana Jones versus James Bond. It's as freaking awesome as you would think. Seriously, the two of them have an amazing fight scene that I wish I could show you in its full entirety, but as usual, YouTube copyright enforcement prevents me from doing that. But needless to say, it lives up to everything you would want in a fight between Bond and Jones. I only wish something else could top that during this episode. You see, I fucking told you this episode was epic. Speaking of which, Indy's love life is just like that of James Bond. He bangs like half of Europe on this show. He has a love affair with Mata Hari, he gets engaged only to have his fiance die at the end of the episode, and then there's... I'd like my gag back, please. Fine. You know, for kids. The episodes with teenage slash young adult Indy are some of my favorites of the show. One of which is when Indy and his sidekick Remy go on a mission with the famous 25th Frontiersman Battalion by the name of the Royal Fusiliers, or as I like to call them, the Grumpy Old Inglorious Bastards. There is one thing which I felt they dropped the ball on, which is no sign of any of the classic Indiana Jones supporting characters. No Sala, no Marion Ravenwood, and no Renee Belloc. Although, had the show continued for another season, the plan was to eventually introduce his history with Belloc and being a pupil of Marion's father, Dr. Abner Ravenwood. 
Also, they really should have had more supernatural elements like they did in the movies. There was only one supernaturally themed episode where Indy went up against Dracula. Yeah, you heard me. Indiana Jones vs. Dracula. This sounds awesome. I can't wait to see some of those cutting edge Lucasfilm special effects. Fuck. Or some other source of high energy. Eh, you know what? I don't care. I don't give a damn about how incredibly shitty this looks. It's Indiana Jones versus the Lord of Vampires. Just to have the chance to see this, I will take the worst special effects this side of Sharknado to be put on film. Actually, these effects might be worse than any Asylum film, but fuck it, this episode rocked. Okay, so I tried to put this off for as long as possible, but I hated re-watching this show. It was so hard to get through. Now, I want to be clear, the show itself is not bad. I used to watch this when it first aired on ABC, but when I picked up the DVDs to watch for this episode, I was hit by a horrible revelation. Instead of having individual episodes, they've been completely repackaged into hour and a half TV movies. So now you can't watch the show in hour-long episodes. Now you have to watch it as practically two hour-long movies. Not to mention, they've removed the most important part of the show. Senior Indy. Yes, folks, that's right. We get to meet a 93-year-old Indiana Jones in this show, as played by George Hall. Harrison Ford was asked to reprise the role, but passed because he felt TV would not do anything for his career. Hall has a really interesting take on how he portrayed an older Indiana Jones, as he did not want to imitate Harrison Ford's mannerisms or just do an impression. He said, and I quote, He's heroic in the sense that he's past the age of caring whether people appreciate what he's saying or not. He's old enough to know that truisms are truisms, and should be believed because they are true. He's a good storyteller, and he makes people want to listen to him and learn from listening to him. And then they go off and learn something else and continue the process of learning. I think it was a good take, because are we really the same person we were when we were 13? People change over time, and so would Indiana Jones. Plus, he wore a freaking eye patch. All these years later, I still want to know where he got that. These bookends with old Indiana Jones brought a lot of heart to the show, humanizing the episodes that were filled with interesting facts about Indiana Jones' life, and how people he has met over the years have shaped it. Because of these bookends, we received a lot of information on what happened after each episode, such as this episode where Indiana has to cross the Congo as second in command, here, Indiana and the other soldiers disobey their superior officer's orders to abandon a child in the jungle to die. And the whole episode revolves around the child as the focus on what his very survival says about the character's view of humanity versus war. The episode ends with the child being handed over to nuns who name him Barthelemy after the African sergeant who saved the child. And in the end, we learn that this boy grew up to be Barthelemy Boganda, the first elected president of the century. Central African Republic. Very key information, right? I never really appreciated how big of an impact these old indie bookends had on the show. One of my favorites was from the episode where nine-year-old Indy got to meet his first love, Princess Sophie of Hohenberg, the real-life daughter of the Archduke of Austria, Franz Ferdinand. In this bookend, Old Indy tells the tale of his first love to a psychiatrist, who is evaluating him to prove he's not senile. It's an incredibly sweet and moving episode, with baby Indy making a passionate plea to Princess Sophie's father, only for Archduke Ferdinand to tell Indy he can't be with his daughter. And I truly love the bookend at the ending of this episode. It is just so touching. I, I'm sorry to have kept you so long. I've got to be going. Tell me something, Mr. Jones. Did you ever see her again? Of course I did. But that's another story. Yep, the show indeed was a real gem. Until it was repackaged into TV movies, because that's when George Hall was removed from the show on the DVDs. But don't worry, if you'd like to see these episodes as they originally aired, you can just do nothing because they never came out! That's right, old Indiana Jones was yet another victim of George fucking Lucas. God fucking damn you, Lucas! Why must you constantly change things that were perfectly fine to begin with? Hayden Christensen is not a force ghost. And this is the real celebration music from Return of the Jedi.
Not this! God, I have no fucking clue what that is. And Han fucking shot first! So why, oh why, would they remove old Indy? Why in God's name would they make such a stupid change? Wait, because Indy has a daughter? Well, so what? He has a daughter. Why would that be a big deal if... He, oh, no, dear lord, no, please, no! <laughs> no, Mutt Williams, you do not exist! I have scrubbed my memory of you, foul beast! I banish thee! I banish you to the hell you were spawned from! I curse you as I would curse evil incarnate! Be gone, you vine-swinging monkey abomination! Be gone! So what was the reason that caused this show to get cancelled? Well, two reasons were given. One was that the show garnered low ratings, and the other was how expensive it was to make. Now, normally, I would call bullshit on this claim about high production cost, but this show was filmed in 25 countries across the world and featured cars and wardrobe from the early 1900s. So with that many things being taken into account, the cost must have been astronomical. And with that much money being spent on a blockbuster property from George Lucas, the ratings had to be big. But sadly, they were not. And thus, Indy put down his whip for good. I said Indy put down his whip for good. Fuck you. So now for the million dollar question. Should this show come back? Yes, absolutely, but with some caveats. First off, bring back old Indy. Secondly, water down the ham-fisted cameos from historical figures unless they have a real impact on Indiana Jones' life story. And finally, feature some classic Indiana Jones characters. Also, for the love of God, release the episodes as they originally aired, warts and all, on DVD and or Blu-ray if possible. Sadly, I don't know of any streaming platforms that support this series. Hello, Disney Plus, Lucasfilm, help a brother out! I think maybe for international fans, Amazon Prime may play it, but for the most part, if you want to see this show, you're gonna have to buy the DVD box set. And fortunately, the old indie bookends are on YouTube if you're curious. So put on your fedora and pick up your whip to search the caves of Amazon for this precious Ark of the Covenant. Hey, no. Oh, go to hell! Down in an ancient temple there There's a golden idol standing Dr. Jones pulls out a bag of sandy sand Weighs it with his hand But it weighs too much and it falls through Now a boulder is chasing him Andy, give me your mask Give me your mask I can't You know, for kids <laughs>